Hi, Mr. Natural here uh, from Mr. Natural's Music School in San Francisco. Welcome. Well, we're going to start a new playlist here. I have already put a playlist up showing you how to read music by interval and it put up 21 songs in the key of E flat. Now what we're going to do is take some of those songs that are in E flat and some additional songs and we're going to look at the harmonies and I'm going to teach you how to flush out the harmonies by number. But before we do, there's some things that you've got to learn about harmony. Now harmony is not that easy. It can get complicated. So I've tried to simplify it by inventing this little thing which I call the circle, the circle of thirds. You'll notice that it's the first four odd numbers followed by three even numbers. One, three, five, seven, two, four, six. What happens on the piano is if we start with one on a line, then the next note is on a space, and the note after that is on a line. So going from one to three is going from line to line. Going from three to five is going to another line. Five to seven would be going to another line. Seven to the next line would be two. Two to the next line would be four. 4 to the next line would be 6, and then from 6 it comes back to 1. And this pattern, the circle of thirds, is every other note or every line on the staff. It's also, let's say you start with the number 2, 2, 4, 6, 1, 3, 5, 7, those could also be all the spaces. So you'll see later on, learning to read music by interval is just getting this pattern in your eyeball and deciding where one is or where the number two is or actually any number on the staff and then every other line or every other space would be this pattern generated over and over. The circle of thirds is also the way that all chords are built. Chords are built through a skipping pattern. So you always skip from a three to a five to a seven to a two, etc., etc. Now, if we do this skipping pattern with just three notes, that chord is called a triad. And what happens is this pattern will describe and spell all of the normal triads in the diatonic scale. So what I have written right here is, if you take the number one, three, and five, that becomes the first chord, which we call the one major chord. If you take here and go two, four, six, that becomes the normal default spelling for the two chord. And the two chord is normally a minor chord. Now in chords, there are major chords and minor chords. Major chords are bright, marchy chords. Minor chords are sad, bluesy chords. There are also diminished chords, which are like a double minor, very cramped down. And there's an augmented chord in which the major is expanded. But those don't come up very much, and we'll talk about those a little bit later on. The only chord of that type that comes up is the diminished chord in this series. So we're only going to talk mostly about major chords, bright ones, and minor chords, sad ones. And then later we'll show you that on the number seven, this weird chord called the diminished chord is built. So if we go on here, if I go three, five, seven, 3, 5, 7, I get what's called a 3 chord, and that is also a minor or a sad chord. If I spell from 4, 4, 6, 1, I get another major chord. If I spell from 5, 7, 2, I get another major chord. It's called the 5 chord. If I spell from 6, 1, 3, I get another natural minor chord. And if I spell 7, 2, 4, we get that weird diminished chord called the seven chord. Now the name of these chords with Roman numerals is totally dependent on the first number. So a one chord is built on one, a two chord is built on two, a four chord is on four, a five chord is on five. You'll also notice something. All of these are generic integer numbers. There are no fractions, there are no sharps or flats, these are the natural numbers that occur at the keyboard, and I'm going to show them to you in a minute and how they can be moved around using our intervalometer. The thing I want you to notice, though, is that the 1 chord, the 4 chord, and the 5 chord, which we call primary chords, are all three major. And with those three chords, I can harmonize uh, the number 1, the number 2, I can harmonize the number 3, I can harmonize the number four, five, six, seven, or the number one. So any 
note in the diatonic scale can be harmonized with just the one, the four, and the five. And that's why most songs, what we call cowboy songs or sing around the campfire songs, just use a one chord, a four chord, and a five chord. Now we have what's called secondary chords, which are the natural minor chords. And the natural minor chords here are the two chord, the three chord, and the six chord. And the thing about those is they too can harmonize one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in the scale. I can use a six chord for one, I can use a two chord for two, I can use the a three chord for five, six, seven, etc. So the secondary chords, two, three, and six are naturally minor or sad, and any of those three chords can also harmonize all of the notes in the diatonic scale. The odd man out here that sounds weird to the ear is the seven here. This is naturally a diminished chord. These intervals hidden to your eye are squished up even smaller than major and even smaller than minor. Now we're going to go to the piano and I'm going to show you what this looks like and how we can take these natural default numbers and with the intervalometer play them anywhere in any key. Hi, I'm going to ask the camera to come in nice and close and look at the keyboard here. Come on in, everybody. And look down here at the keyboard and you'll see we have this device I call an intervalometer. The kids call it the slider. And it has the numbers of the diatonic scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. And we now have it set up so the number one is pointing at middle C. Now, to play a one chord, I just push one, three, and five. I'm hitting three notes at once, so that's called a triad. That is a one chord. If I want to make a two chord, I push two, skip to four, skip to six, and there's that natural spelling for the two minor chord. The three minor chord is three, five, seven, and that's also naturally a minor chord. Then when we skip over here to four, four, six, one, we now have the next major chord called the four chord. If we build on five, five, seven, and two, we now have what's called the five chord. And this is also a major chord. Then if we go here to six, six, skip to one, skip to three, we now have a natural minor, also known as the six minor chord. And here's seven, two, that weird sounding chord which we call the natural diminished chord and then we wind up right back at one, three, five again. So, major chord, minor chord, minor chord, major or primary, <coughs> major or primary, minor, <coughs> diminished, and back to the one chord again. Now I want to show you that with this intervalometer, one of the things I have my students do is with two hands <coughs> practice what we call arpeggiation. One, three, five, one, and then backwards. And we make them say the numbers out loud. Two, four, six, two, four, six, six, four, two, six, four, two, three, five, seven, three, five, seven, seven, five, three, seven, five, three. Four six one four six one one six four one six four five seven two five seven two two seven five two seven five six one three six three one six three one six seven two four seven four two seven and then back to one three five. And now what we've done is played all of the normal numbered chords, major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished chord. Now what I want to show you is <clears throat> these same numbers, if moved into another location, will map in a new scale. This will map in a new scale, and if I play those same numbers, I will get the same sounding chords. So let's move it over here to E flat. Now in E flat, we have a flat here on the number one, two, three, a flat on four, a flat on five, six, seven, and you see we still get what's called the diatonic scale. One, two, three, four, five, six. Do, ti, la, 
so fa mi re do. Now watch, I'm going to play a one chord. Still is a major chord. The two chord is still going to be minor. Two, four, six. Three, five, seven will be minor. Four, six, one is a major chord. Five, seven, two. Six, one, three, minor. Seven, two, four. And back to one, three, five. And so you see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and back to one. Same sound. One chord, two chord, three chord, four chord, five chord, six chord. Major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished. Now I'm going to put it into another key over here. One, two, four, six, three, five, seven, four, six, one, five, seven, two, six, one, three, seven, two, four, one, three, five, three, one, four, two, seven. Coming backwards, three, one, six, two, seven, five, one, six, four, seven, five, three, six, four, two, five, three, one, three, one, sorry. Now we can do this forward or backwards and we always get the same quality from the chords. Now let's do it one more time and an even harder. Let's, one, three, five, two, four, six, three, five, seven, four, six, one, five, seven, two, six, one, three, seven, two, four, one, two. Same sound. Let's try it on all the black keys. One, three, five, two, four, six, three, five, seven, four, six, one, five, seven, two, six, one, three, seven, two, four, one, three, five. Still a one chord, a two chord, a three chord, a four, a five, a six, a seven. The ratios are the same. The sound is the same. Major chord, minor chord, natural minor chord. Major chord, major chord, natural minor chord, diminished chord. So we can take the intervalometer, we can put it anywhere we want. One chord, two chord, three chord, four chord, five chord, six chord, seven chord, one chord. And it doesn't matter where we put the intervalometer, it will automatically map one Five seven four six one five seven two six one three seven two four one three five three one. Got it. So once moving it back to C, once we've got a one chord, two chord, three chord, four chord, five chord, six chord, seven chord, and back to the one chord, we can play those configurations with those straight numbers, integer numbers, anywhere on the piano in any key. Now, the trick is, how do we take those normal defaults and modify them? And that's what the next video will be about. Modifying these chords into a different type of chord. So, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope I didn't go too fast. I hope you can see what advantage the intervalometer has. In the near future, I will be putting an intervalometer on my website at www.mrnatural.net. Please go there, look for the PDF file, and download it. Print it to your printer, and you'll have one to put behind your black keys as well. See you next time.